Hi all, today we will make a flyback power supply on the DK1203 chip. Its power is approximately 12 watts. The output voltage is 12 volts with a current of 1 ampere. Why do we make a power supply on a DK1203 chip? Firstly, because it has a number of advantages over microcircuits of this type. Well, secondly, it has the functions we need. Its advantage is that it can operate with a voltage of 85 to 260 volts, operating at a frequency of 65 kilohertz. Also, the microcircuit has protection against overheating, overcurrent, overvoltage, and overload protection. Also, it does not require additional winding on the transformer to power it. To do this, the microcircuit provides a self-powered circuit. If a weak load is connected at the output of the power supply, the microcircuit automatically switches to the pulse skipping mode. And in standby mode, the power supply consumes less than 0.3 watts. We will make the power supply according to the standard scheme taken from the data sheet. The scheme is very simple. There is nothing complicated in it. The work is also facilitated by the fact that the legs 1, 4, and 6 on the microcircuit are not used. No microcircuit outputs are connected to them, and they do not ring with anything. This seems to be one of the lightest power supply circuits made on microcircuits. To create it, we need about 20 parts. We will solder the details on such a board for homemade products. Its dimensions are 5 by 7 centimeters. To create a power supply, we just need to wind the transformer and solder all the details on the board. After several hours of work, we get such a cool device. The power supply is easy to manufacture and has a compact size. If desired, it can be made even smaller since a small set of parts is used. I will show in more detail how each part looks from the circuit on the board. Fuse 1 inch is a fuse. I didn't install it. D1, D2, D3, D4 are 1N4007 rectifier diodes. These are the most common diodes in the world, but just in case, I will show them for beginners. EC1 is a 22 microfarad, 400 volt high voltage electrolytic capacitor. I use 10 microfarads for myself. R1 is a 68 kilo ohm resistor. Capacitor C1, 10 nanofarad, 200 volts. Usually they are marked 103. D5 is the FR107 pulsed high frequency diode. IC1 is the heart of our power supply, chip DK1203. EC2 is a 22 microfarad 10 volt electrolytic capacitor. Also in the data sheet, it is said that the capacitance can be changed from 10 to 100 microfarads. C2 is a 10 nanofarad capacitor marked 103, suitable for any voltage. IC2A and IC2B is a chip PC817 optocoupler. Y1 is a 22 nanofarad 400 volt noise suppression capacitor, usually marked 222. I did not find such a capacitor and I set it to zero, 22 nanofarads. It is clear that this capacity is 10 times less than recommended, but this does not affect the output characteristics of the power supply. T1 is a transformer, size E20. It has only two windings, primary and secondary. The primary winding consists of 120 turns divided into two half windings of 60 turns. There are 17 turns in the secondary winding. I found a core of a suitable size in the ballast of a fluorescent energy-saving light bulb. I solder out it and take it apart. 
A coil is wound on the core, which I remove and debug to the side. I will take the wire from the primary winding of the transformer from the coil, which is used in the disk electricity meter. We wind the primary winding as follows. First, we wind half of the primary winding 60 turns. We turn the frame on either side. We make a symbol in our head that this is the side of the primary winding. We start winding from the left leg, winding the wire behind the frame from the left side. Then it will come out on the right side, and we will have one turn. Then repeating the operation, we make another 59 of the same turns. It should turn out like this. When the wire from the last turn comes out on the right side, we wind it on the right leg, but we don't bite. We wind the adhesive tape in one or two layers, making insulation between the windings. For the secondary winding, I took the wire that was wound on the frame before. I folded it several times to get a vein with a diameter of about one millimeter. I twisted it in a spiral and wound it over the primary winding. Also, starting from the left leg, I go around the wire around the frame. I wind 17 turns. I solder the end of the wire that came out on the right side of the frame to the right leg. Again, I make insulation from scotch tape. Then we turn the frame again with the side from which we started winding the primary winding. We take the wire that we left, and then we also wind 60 turns in the same direction. After the last turn has been wound, solder the end of the wire to the right leg. The primary and secondary windings of the transformer are ready. The core from the throttle looks like this. It has a gap on the middle column, just what we need. You can see the dimensions of the core on your screen. Gap 0.9 millimeters. Then we take our frame with primary and secondary windings and insert the core into it, so that the halves of the core do not fall apart. They can be wrapped with tape or simply glued together. Now let's check the inductance of the primary winding using an inductance meter, which I did in one of the previous videos. The link to it will be in the description. The inductance turned out to be 715 microhenries. This is not very good, since the inductance recommended in the data sheet is 1200 microhenries. By the way, the power supply will work on 700 microhenries, only it will produce less power. To increase the inductance, it is necessary to reduce the gap between the halves of the core. To do this, I just filed the side legs with a file. Unfortunately, this has to be done at random, constantly measuring the inductance. Then I adjusted the inductance to 900 microhenries, and then up to 1000, only I didn't capture it on camera. Then I did not grind, stopping at this option. D6 is a low dropout shot key diode marked SR2100. EC3 and EC4 are 470 microfarad 16 volt electrolytic capacitors. It is advisable to take them with low internal resistance. But if someone does not have these, you can put the usual ones. Just keep in mind that they will heat up more and more over. EC3 will heat up more than EC4. The LED signaling that the power supply is working, you can put any, at least three millimeters, at least five millimeters. And in order for it not to burn out from a large voltage, there is a 1 kilo ohm resistor R2 in series with it. L1 is a 10 microhenry inductor. A Faraday dumbbell can be taken from the ballast of a fluorescent energy saving light bulb. It just needs to be rewound. Inside we see many turns of thin wire. I unwind it completely to make room for a new coil. An empty dumbbell turned out to be of such size. 
The wire previously unwound from the reel was about 3 meters long. I folded it several times, turning it into a piece about 15 centimeters, and twisted it a little so that it would not unravel. I winded on a dumbbell making 12 turns. Let's check what we got. The inductance was approximately 11.5 micro henries. For the power supply, the error is quite acceptable. R3 is a 1 kilo ohm resistor. ZD1 is an 11 volt Zener diode. I didn't have it in stock and therefore I put a 12 volt Zener diode. Because of this, the voltage at the output of the power supply was not 12 volts, but 13. Now, as usual, at the end of the assembly, I will test the power supply. I will not hang bulbs on the power supply, but I will connect the electronic load that I made in one of the previous videos. If anyone is interested, the link to it will be in the description. I slowly rotate the regulator, raising the load current. The voltage dropped by 0.1 volts. 13 volts 1 amp is stable. I highly recommend this power supply for beginners, as it is easy to manufacture, has a simple circuit, as well as a small set of parts available. In the next video, I'll show you how you can change the output voltage of the power supply by changing just a couple of details, thus adapting it to other needs. If you liked the video, get like, subscribe to my channel, click on the bell, and goodbye to everyone.